I have an entire podcast dedicated to this topic from a few years ago, but I'd like to have a shorter video that goes over some of the reasons why I believe that zombies are the most effective tool in the necromancer's arsenal when it comes to warfare. Computer games and other forms of media do not properly demonstrate many of the key strengths of the undead, but especially neglected are zombies. They're often depicted as the least powerful kind of undead, these slow-moving, relatively easy beginner enemies for heroes to defeat. That's not at all how I see them. To me, the humble zombie is one of the most terrifying and devastating weapons a necromancer can employ. Let's go over the reasons why. To begin, we will examine just what a zombie is. A zombie is a corpse that's been reanimated via some means. In science fiction, this is typically explained as some kind of fungal or parasitic infection, which suggests that the host creature is still alive in some fashion, but for the context of this video I'm talking strictly about the fantasy kind of zombie. The fantasy zombie is dead flesh reanimated through magic and therefore is truly a dead creature. In the context of this video, a zombie is also destroyed after experiencing catastrophic damage. I consider catastrophic damage to be beheading, serious dismemberment, like losing multiple limbs, or being entirely blown to pieces. To make it a bit easier to kill them, let's also say that piercing them through the heart will also kill them. If you've ever been around something that's dead and rotting, you know that you don't want to get near it. The smell from even a small creature such as a rotting rat can be overpowering and is accompanied by swarming flies that eat the flesh. I was recently reacquainted with this phenomenon when some small creature, presumably a rat, died under the kitchen or in the walls somewhere. I was unable to locate and remove it so instead had to wait a fortnight for it to decay away. During this time, the sickly sweet smell of death permeated the house, and dozens of flies had to be killed hourly. The torrent of disgusting maggot-filled flies buzzing incessantly around the house nearly sent me mad. With that picture in mind, now imagine being downwind of a zombie horde. There would be a cloud of flies surrounding the horde at all times, and the sickly, overpowering stench of so many corpses could be smelled for long distances. Perhaps before you even saw it approaching, you'd hear the buzzing and smell them. Which brings me to my next point. How do you fight a zombie? Well, certainly not by walking up to it with a melee weapon in the typical fantasy style, and engaging it, that's for sure. Depending on the amount of magic in your setting, some of the otherwise deadly aspects of being within kissing range of a disgusting mass of rotting flesh, such as infection and disease, could be mitigated via enchanted amulets or blessings from a priest but you'd still be blinded by the cloud of flies. Each strike you land on the zombies would agitate the flies further, and it'd be like walking through a cloud of insects. There's also no telling what harm being so close to so many corpses, and breathing in those fumes and gases, many of which are very poisonous on top of being utterly disgusting to inhale, would do to you. Unconventional tactics would certainly be a requirement for fighting zombies. Due to the aforementioned reasons, I don't think engaging them in any kind of melee fashion would be anything but a last resort. There's another very critical reason why the normal yes. rules of combat oh, wait, break down when faced with the undead. A lack of self-preservation, a lack of morale considerations, and a lack of fatigue. When two groups of humans fight each other, each party is mutually concerned with minimizing harm to themselves. Soldiers have lives beyond the conflict, family at home, the desire to live beyond the current engagement, etc. This causes a kind of engagement in combat where, when two formations collide, they're concerned with dodging, parrying, blocking, and other forms of mitigating harm to themselves. Zombies, though, they don't care about any of this. When engaging a group of spearmen, the first few zombies will quite happily impale themselves on the enemy's spears, rendering those spears useless. And then even if those spears incapacitated those zombies, there's still a whole host of zombies pushing those zombies from behind. Before you know it, those soldiers have lost their spears and are now reaching for their sidearms, if they're even able to do so against the crush of the oncoming wall of flesh which seeks nothing but to close the distance and engulf them. You cannot cause a zombie horde to rout from battle. If zombies are flanked on the sides by horsemen or other soldiers, They'll be disadvantaged by having to fight on multiple fronts, but they're not going to drop their weapons and flee the field. Zombies will fight just as passionately if they're 10,000 strong, or if there's only one of them. This means that open field tactics are quite futile. One of the computer games which handles this aspect well in my opinion is Total War Warhammer 3. 
In this game, zombie hordes are especially resistant to ambushes when compared to other armies. If anything, they're just happy that the enemy has engaged them sooner. Your best hope against zombies is probably things like explosives, flamethrowers, artillery, and traps. If you can lay a field of mines before the horde and blow them to bits, they'd do well to thin their numbers. Flamethrowers would mitigate the flies as well as damage their necrotic flesh, although to what degree they'd be damaged is debatable. If insufficiently damaged, you'd have a flaming zombie to contend with. Artillery of all kinds would be good against zombies. Cannons with chains shot to tear them apart would probably be best, but even lobbing stones from a trebuchet would be better than nothing. Pitfall traps which would cause zombies to fall down and break bones, etc. would be good because some would die and the rest would be reduced to crawling zombies, or zombies that are not dead but too damaged to move and be a threat. In most cases, shooting zombies with arrows won't work very well. Zombies don't feel pain or bleed to death, so you'd have to be hitting the zombie directly in the vulnerable spot like it's hard to kill it. Otherwise, it'd become a zombie pincushion rather than a dead zombie. The only situation where arrows would work well against zombies is if your zombies can only take a certain threshold of damage and arrows shot contribute to this damage. But they will not damage zombies the way that arrows damage and kill humans or other living creatures. The final aspect to consider when fighting zombies is fatigue. Swinging weapons is hard work, and made only harder when inhaling all those nasty zombie fumes. Zombies don't really tire though, not in the same way that humans do anyway. They might slow down and weaken a bit in strength, but they're not going to collapse on the floor gasping for breath. Maybe they should though, fatigue experienced is a good topic to look into for balance reasons. Undead also don't sleep. This means that a living army trying to outrun or escape from a zombie horde is going to have a tough time. Even if the zombies can only shamble along, they have hours to catch up to the exhausted human forces that need to rest. Zombies are the ultimate persistence hunters. But where the potential of zombies is truly realized is when you look beyond reanimated humans. Nobody would really look at a peaceful herd of cattle grazing in a paddock and think they could be used as soldiers except for a necromancer. Kill those cattle, raise them up as zombies, and now you've got horned quadrupedal shock troops to charge into the enemy and flatten them in a way that only 500 kilograms or 1100 pounds of flesh can. If you continue to think outside the box on this, even small creatures like pigeons or rats can be used to tremendous effect during warfare. Fly your undead pigeons into the wells and contaminate the water. Cause undead rats to invade the homes of those sleeping beyond the safety of their besieged walls, biting them and contaminating their food. Can you imagine being attacked by a zombie rat? Just think about it for a second. That would be a serious problem to deal with. Now think about a swarm of zombie rats. You might win the war with zombie rats alone, come to think of it. There is endless potential here, and it's long been my belief that human zombies are actually the least effective form of zombie. Animals come with much better natural weapons and protections than human ones do too. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think of zombies, and if you want to hear about additional aspects pertaining to zombies and their strengths, please check out my old podcast in the link in the description. Topics covered in the podcast that aren't covered in this video is the horror aspect of fighting zombies as well as armored zombies, zombies, and how they're depicted in media, science fiction zombies, the shelf life of a zombie, zombie effectiveness in different climates, repairing and upgrading zombies, and much more.